What we've found um, in our work over the last 12 months uh, has been a mixed bag. Some really good things, some things you would be proud of. Uh, and if you'll forgive me, I'll just deal with some of the gaps. But I do reiterate, there are lots of good things uh, happening out there. There has until recently be, been an absence of comparative uh, financial information in the sector. Very limited benchmarking uh, across forces. Hardly any benchmarking, by the way, between the police and the private sector or the third sector. Very little. Last 12 months you've seen some movement in that. Uh, when I took on this job, because I have national responsibility for the money, <coughs> apart from being the HMI for the north of England, uh, the Treasury uh, quite rightly was saying, look, Roger, don't come to us just listing these 43 forces. We want to know what other sectors are providing. The data will show the variations in spend that could still protect the public and the front line to be around a billion quid. This is where the 12% uh, came from, over four years. If you're going quickly, if you're taking more, expect a uh, front line in a number of areas to be impacted. We also found that staff are not always aligned, by the way, to public priorities. Yeah. There are some oddities. Uh, shift patterns and availability caused some uh, tensions when we published it in the summer. It wasn't meant as a scathing criticism, but it was meant to point out that some of these things where you're going to have to do more for less is look at those areas of business. Uh, some systems that uh, were staff and officers uh, only have 177 days a year at work, and I'm not anti-work-life uh, balance, by the way. It can be odd, and that didn't include uh, training. That is not the fault of the staff, by the way, who are working those systems, uh, but the leadership that probably hadn't fully considered uh, some of the implications around it. There has been a growth of specialists, uh, which has bred, to some degree, some risk aversion and bureaucracy. That has been the fault primarily of regulators like HMIC and some of it, central government, where forces and authorities have been asked to almost eliminate risk. Well, I'm afraid life is not quite like that. And the history in policing has been a uh, accounting type exercise. Success for me when I was a chief constable is come in within half a percent of your budget. Yeah, creativity within it uh, was somewhat limited. And if you did try to be creative, by the way, you were generally uh, criticized for it. Benchmarking I've touched upon, interoperability. When the plans are being reshaped by authorities and forces, uh, what we've found is patchy is how does that have a national infrastructure overview? If everyone gets rid of X units and then the country needs them, the Olympics being a fine example, although it does have uh, separate governance arrangements, uh, we can find then we've let down the, all the citizens in England and Wales if this has not got a national a perspective to it, a regional one, and then uh, the local one. Uh, plans, which I'll come on to, we, we ask forces and authorities to self-assess. So the eight of them out of 43 being fit for purpose at the time is not my assessment of it. It's what forces and authorities told me in the summer. Uh, to be fair to forces and authorities at that time, of course, uh, they didn't know the outcome of the emergency budget, never mind about the 20% announcement. Although the scenarios at that time, people were guessing somewhere between 25 and 40% was the scenario planning of the day. Um, there are significant opportunities, I would put to you. There are some opportunities in this for the citizen to get an even better deal and at the same time have a very robust front end uh, in policing. Uh, government has a key role to play in this by giving Police authorities, certainly until May 2012, when we'll see what history uh, brings to us at that point, to give them those freedoms. You've seen some of it with some of the targets, but there needs to be, for me, a sensible balance around what this targetry might look like. Uh, if I could take the banking sector, for example, that had very, very light touch regulation before it all went belly up. Yeah. So there has to be a degree of sensitivity. For example, I'm fairly exercised at this moment about burglary in England and Wales. It's tending to go up. If you've, if you've ever been the victim of burglary, by the way, hopefully you haven't, it's outrageous. Somebody's been in your home 
That's how serious it is. And I think it's right for a regulator like me to be fairly vigorous with police authority chairs and chief constables saying, please tell me what you're doing about burglary for your citizen, because it's important. I'm told that that really is not, you know, it's de rigueur. Last season's colour, old boy, don't do that. Uh, but I am independent and I will keep doing it and I will keep ringing chief constables saying, can you assure me uh, that we're on track? What are we doing next then? Support and challenge meetings, we're going to start this week but because the settlement's not out, that's where we go to uh, chief constables and police authorities and say, can you tell us about your plans for the citizen? Vernon touched upon the functions we said of PCSO's response teams, neighbour policing teams. These were the numbers on available at certain times of day, weren't particularly high numbers. Uh, and Vernon's right, it needs a broader context to include, you know, child protection units, detectives, etc. And we're currently working with other colleagues on how do we represent that and measure that for the citizen. Value for money profiles gives forces and authorities a benchmark against other forces and authorities to look at. How much am I spending in HR? There are four and a half thousand people, by the way, working IT in the police service in England and Wales. I'm not sure IBM have got that many, but there are things like that uh, that do need looking at. Shift systems we're looking at. Productivity, there isn't a definition of productivity that's agreed yet in the police service. Uh, my view is we need to get to the bottom of that. Except in the police service, don't knock out widgets. This is not a production line, but there's got to be a feel of what a reasonable job uh, looks like and risk. People are at different places, so there will be different risks. These are the areas we're going to look at. Is the scale of the problem understood? Hopefully. Is there a credible plan? Uh, over four years. Fundamentally, what's the impact on service delivery? My first question, so if you're from police authorities or chief officer's team, here's a freebie. How much is your crime coming down next year? What's your plans to reduce crime? What's your feel for it? Because if the citizen aren't protected, uh, then there's a problem. The rest of the plan just becomes a, an internal, almost bookkeeping exercise. And importantly, how is this communicated to the people that we all serve? How are the public engaged in this? And we're looking at how can we support forces and authorities through that process. This is not about demeaning people. This is not about pointing the finger and saying, you aren't very good at that. HMIC aren't very good at it, if you want to look at an organisation that does need to sharpen its toe clips. Uh, but it's about how do we help each other through the process. So finally, there are opportunities for the public in this. If you get the basics right, the public will go with you. Get your phone answered properly, turn up, they like face-to-face -face contact, do something about the issues, take difficult people off the streets for them and tell them what you've done. You'll be canonised for it. And it does make a difference to their lives. It isn't about cost reduction. This is not pure, I could take 50% out of the business by, yeah, let's close all the police stations. Let's just lay people off. Doesn't suit the business. Doesn't suit uh, what you are the best in the world at if you work in this sector. It does, by the way, mean doing some things uh, differently. Those who work in and around policing, you'll probably walk around police stations or buildings and sometimes wonder to yourself, what do the 30 people in this room do? Yeah, be good people, real people with mortgages and families and be proud to work for that organisation. But these questions uh, have to be asked. Aligning staff to the public priorities, if you haven't done it, and I'm, I know some people have done it by the way, but ensuring that's right. Looking at availability and some of the productivity issues and making sure it's balanced across the local through to the national. And if you could do all that by the 31st of March, I'd be really, really grateful. <laughs> Thank you.